Hello, and welcome to the Bellingham Bay Renovation Tour, in case you missed the in-person one. Today's tour is brought to you by Resources, with Kirsten McDade, our Pollution Prevention Specialist, myself, Eleanor Hines, North Sound Baykeeper, Lead Scientist, and Destiny Dunbar, our Community Engagement Specialist. Today we're bringing you this tour in the comfort of your own home. However, this tour was originally hosted on September 15, 2021 in person at Waypoint Park along the Bellingham Bay waterfront in Bellingham, Washington. So even though we aren't there in person today, we hope that you will still enjoy this tour. On this tour, I will give you a little bit of an overview of the mock-up process, then Kirsten will give you an overview of some of the history of Bellingham Bay, and we'll also hear from uh, staff from the Port of Bellingham as well as the Working Waterfront Coalition to give their perspectives on the renovation of the Bellingham Bay waterfront. And finally, Destiny will let you guys all know what actions you guys can take in the future to help um, see the vital waterfront that we all want. For short, I will use the acronym MACA, which stands for the Model Toxics Control Act. MACA was passed as a Washington state's initiative in 1988 with the intent of speeding up the cleanups of our state's legacy contaminated sites. Today, Bellingham Bay has 12 MACA sites, the GP West site here being one of those. We'll also touch a base on a few of the other sites as well. The MACA process starts with what's called site discovery. Someone has to first identify that a property has been contaminated and report it to the Department of Ecology. Next, a site hazard assessment happens where the site is assessed for how much of a hazard is actually present and then if it is indeed a model toxics control act site then a remedial investigation and feasibility study will be done where the site is further looked into and studied to figure out the extent of the contamination and what some of the potential cleanups might look like and then a cleanup action plan follows which has a finer detail of what the cleanup action will look like followed by the engineering design which um, has even further detail and then there's the actual cleanup of the site following the cleanup of the site there is monitoring and site use controls and eventually there are reviews and delisting of the site. To find out more information, I encourage you to check out the notes along with this video to find out more information on the mock-up process and how you can participate during the public comment periods. Next, Kirsten McDade will talk a little bit more about the history of Bellingham Bay. Thanks, Eleanor, for that introduction. We are looking at a sea of concrete on top of Phil. If we were to turn back time about 100 to 200 years ago, we would be standing on a mudflat. I imagine it looked much like Birch Bay. These mudflats were rich with life. Clams, crabs, flounders, seaweed, a true cornucopia. They are also the traditional homelands and hunting grounds of the Coast Salish tribes, specifically the Nooksack and Lummi. I have been told that the Seaholm family inhabited this particular piece of land. Then, about 150 years ago, the landscape began to change. A lot. A series of dredge and fill events created the land we are standing on. Marine sediments were dug out, like here in the Whatcom Waterway, to make room for ships, and deposited here to create upland areas. These upland areas were dominated by industries, largely timber, but there were, and still are, many other industries such as boatyard maintenance and repair, shipbuilding, fueling stations, and there was even an olivine crushing plant in INJ Waterway. These industries operated well before any type of environmental regulations, like the Clean Water Act or Clean Air Act, and unknowingly or knowingly left a lot of contamination that we are now cleaning up today. There are 12 cleanup sites in Bellingham Bay, and they are in different stages of cleanup. Before we walk, before we talk about some of these cleanup sites, let's hear from some of our speakers about the plans and visions for this renovation. What does the Port of Bellingham envision for this area in the next two years? Yeah, uh, you know, the Port, along with all of our project partners in the city, the Department of Ecology, uh, and the community, you know, have had a long-term plan for the Waterfront District. And really, uh, following through with that plan for a, a, a vibrant uh, community space, cleanup, redevelopment, uh, bringing down a diverse economy to the back to the waterfront, uh, and just seeing that whole plan come into come to fruition in the next ten years is uh, is what we want to see. 
What does the Working Waterfront Coalition envision for this area in the next 10 years? Well, as president of the coalition, I'm Pete Granger, and we're very excited about um, the challenge of creating more commercial and technical jobs on the waterfront, both here and in, in Blaine. And especially, I think, down the way uh, where the shipping terminal is, there's some real possibilities for uh, growth in the industrial sector down there. We're also very supportive of the mixed use that's being going on in this waterfront district. So. What kind of job opportunities are you hoping to see here? Well, I think we're, we're particularly interested in maintaining the current level of marine trades and growing that. Uh, boat building, commercial fishing, seafood processing, uh, boat forage, the kinds of uh, jobs that, that are inherent in the saltwater environment. We don't want to see those lost, but we hope to grow them. What excites you most about the waterfront redevelopment and restoration? Well, you know, actually it's been super exciting just to see how active this space has gotten just by the, the little about, amount of work that we've accomplished to date. So like seeing families come down uh, to the park, seeing the bike, bike track in place, just seeing uh, people come down to the water for the first time in a hundred years, uh, just seeing that all come, come around uh, has been so fantastic. A commercial fisherman and a longtime seafood industry person, I'm excited about the possibilities that Bellingham Waterfront and Blaine have in respect to continuing the commercial fishing jobs and businesses that are here, and also seafood processing. We're looking across the way at the, the former ASB pond that Georgia Pacific had, and the Port Commission has some really exciting plans about opening that up, filling in part of the, the pond, and creating a deep water port where larger fish processing vessels can moor and unload and load. What has surprised you the most throughout this process? You know, just how long this takes. It's been it's been um, great to see all this happening. There's still a, a lot to do, and it's going to take a long time. And unfortunately, it just uh, takes always takes a little bit longer than you'd hope. Um, but we're starting to see the results. Let's take a look now at some of these cleanups that are in Bellingham Bay. The mouth of Whatcom Creek was used as a landfill in the early 1900s and is known as the Holly Street Landfill. Cleanup of the site was completed in 2005. Whatcom Waterway received contamination from upland industries like Georgia Pacific. Phase 1 of the cleanup has been completed and Phase 2 is expected to begin within the next year or so. Georgia Pacific Pulp and Tissue Union has been cleaned up and is now a popular destination with a renovated building, a park with a beach and playground, pump track, and pub. Georgia Pacific Chlor Alkali Area, where the mercury contamination originated, is getting closer to being cleaned up. The cleanup and engineering plans are currently being developed. Let's now go back to our guests to see how we can learn more about the organizations they represent. How can people find out more about the Working Waterfront Coalition? Uh, they can go to our website, www.watkinworkingwaterfront.org, and you can see uh, the variety of programs that we have. We're a 501c6 nonprofit. Uh, we advocate for the uh, maritime industries in both Blaine and Bellingham. How can people best follow along port updates in the waterfront redevelopment? Yeah, we do a lot of uh, updates on our website. We also at uh, portofbellingham.com uh, on the waterfront redevelopment. We also work with all of our project partners on very specific things with the city, and they have public outreach, and the Department of Ecology has public outreach. So we try to get uh, as much community engagement as we can through a variety of different ways. But the best update is through the portofbellingham.com. We hope you enjoyed this virtual restoration tour. And if you're wondering how you can learn more and get involved, here are three actions you can take. One, 
Learn more about the different cleanup sites on Department of Ecology's website. Just type in Bellingham Bay Cleanup to read about progress updates, get added to the cleanup email list, and learn more about the cleanup process. Two, attend our other Motka tours. Resources host them on a semi-regular basis, and you can find them on the events page of the resources website or by emailing Kirsten McDade or the general resources email. Three, be an active participant in public comment periods. Oftentimes, there are public comment periods around Motka site cleanups where you can make your voice heard about how you would like to see the land developed and utilized. This tour was made possible by our partnership with the Port of Bellingham, the Washington State Department of Ecology, the Working Waterfront Coalition, and PPG funding. Thank you to everyone who worked on this tour and made it possible, to the participants who joined us for our in-person tour, and last but not least, thank you for watching.